So Software is one of the highest rated platforms to build business applications without any coding. In fact, I've been using Software for over a year for my tools website, digitalsummertain.co, and also for my application, Prompt Genie. This is gonna be a quick tutorial and a review of how to use Software to build business applications, either for internal use or for building client portals without any coding. I'm gonna be building a brand new portal where I can work with my sponsors for my show form content and help them approve my content. So once you're logged in, there is two ways for you to get started. The first way is to start from the scratch so when you start from the scratch you're gonna see like this option to pre-select some of the pages you can automatically add to your project so we're talking about a home page like a list a details a form sign up sign in so like all the sign up process is automatically handled with the software including single sign-on authentication with Google or passwordless login where people get a random code every time they need to log in so everything is super secure in fact all the portals you build using software are SOC 2 and GDP are compliant automatically so without getting into too much of those technical details let's build one together. Instead of starting with a scratch here, I'm going to go look for a template because why work hard when you can work smart, right? So when you go to templates, there are different ways you can filter the templates up top. We can filter by portal, internal tools, dashboards, CRMs, marketplace, member communities, directories like my website, Dish Samaritan. So here I'm just going to take one of those portal templates because the portal I'm trying to build is where let's say I'm working with client A and you know, like in client B and client C, but I have my one CMS, my Airtable where I keep all my content and I want to make sure that, you know, clients can see all the content so they're aware of what's happening in real time and they can also you know give me feedback on the content make changes approve the content and i want to make sure that they only see the content that's relevant to them so once i have my template picked it's going to ask me to connect my database i have an option to connect my Airtable or excel sheet so you know i love using Airtable, but you have an option to connect you know excel sheet or all the other databases that you can see here so once i have my database connected this is the workspace i'm going to see so at the beginning it might seem like it's a bit daunting but i'm just going to walk through each and every every piece of it what it means so you're a bit more familiar to what's going on here so if you could just scroll down you can see like just a bunch of different components that are pre-built that we've added to the page you see a bunch of different headers that's because different headers are for different pages that you can only see like you can only edit the headers on the home page but basically for the user who's logged in user who's not logged in user who's a member user who's not a member so that's why you see a bunch of these headers over here and then on the left this is a list of all the pages that's already pre-done in this template so we have pages for project details the clients etc etc this is kind of like the overall theme that you can change in terms of like the accent and the colors that you want the buttons to have or just like the overall style of the application so if i click on the header here i'll have multiple options here i've got the features i've got the style then i've got the visibility so features just basically means here i'm going to be adding my logo so i can just upload my assets and every asset i upload it's going to be there for the rest of the project so i don't have to re-upload any over and over again and then under features i can add as many links as i want so you see here i have like you know project link and voice link which is part of the template we can just basically change you know what these links go to these things could go to the bottom of the page to an external page to a different page within the application so I have like a lot of this control over what I can do with these pages just through this like you know drop down menus and I can add more pages I can you know change the text of the, the menu options and all that stuff so super simple to edit if you like click on the brush icon and you can change the styling of like each menu option but if you go to the styles we're going to be able to change the styling of like the whole like the top bar or whichever element we're playing with so the background colors the margins and and the padding etc and if you go to the visibility here's where we can change like who can actually get to see this menu so this is you know could be login users which have like certain user group so again you can see how granular we can get here we can just pick each element and for each element we can select who gets to see this block which user groups and like you know even at the device level so if you want to make sure that this is only visible for web and not for mobile we can just deselect the mobile or the tablet so this is like a bit of a quick overview of like how you can start customizing these elements to make sure that the portal or the application you're building starts matching your brand the way you want it to be so i'm just gonna do rest of it quickly and uh like change the hero section as well so it sort of like starts matching my brand a little bit more and it sort of communicates what i'm trying to build here okay here we have partner with digital samaritan access content inquire partnerships inquire partnerships button will take me to form down below and access content will take me to the login page and for the login page for the new users or the users of the account it's going to take them to the portal so even with just a quick of a bit of a branding change it seems like it's sort of already coming together right we're going to keep this simple so now i'm going to create a login page so for the most applications you know you're going to already have a login page we can just customize because every template comes with one but i'm just going to show you quickly how to like you know what a new page looks like and how to add elements and what that would look like for you here when we have a new page we're just going to start with the name it's already gonna have like you know the pagination for it and then here i'm gonna have like my top header like bunch of different headers that we that we just talked about
dog and my footer. So here in the center, I'm gonna add a block. This is basically where you start building your application or your portal. So here I have a bunch of options for the header I can choose. I can have like horizontal cards, vertical cards, table, list of pages, sign up form, customizable form. This is where like, you know, we can bring all the data from our Airtable or from Excel sheet, which users can edit, you know, or like they can view based on the permission controls. And for the payments, you like, you know, it's all integrated with Stripe, so you can connect to Stripe. So it's like all kind of handles automatically. Then we have like inbox, calendar, Kanban, charts, summer, organizational chart, comments, like, you know, just so much stuff you can do for each application. So I'm just going to add here my user authentication, which is going to be a sign up form. The sign up form already has like, you know, set up with a Google, I can ask for name, email, password. I can link my terms and conditions, which I can link to an external page or a page within my application, depending on where it resides. And I can add other elements to the form as well as necessary. So again, it's super simple to build like, you know, the form for sign up for any user. And I'm just going to change the branding a little bit so it matches my brand. And voila, here we have it. The form is ready to go. And now I'm going to go here to my page rules to sort of figure out what happens when somebody's logged in or somebody's not logged in or they don't have access. So this is where I can just like pick for every user group or like, you know, I can pick for logged in users or non-logged in users. And I can start customizing like where I want users to go. So like if you're technical, you're kind of like familiar with the user states. This is what it is where we can also like start prioritizing that, you know, for clients, for admins, for different user groups that we have where we want the people to go once you're logged in or whichever page you're on. It's trying to like map out the pages people need to navigate. So when somebody's using your application, that is super simple, it's super seamless, and they can find everything they're looking for. I didn't talk about the user groups part. So let me just go over that real quick. So when we go to the users tab, this is where we can define who the users are and what sort of permissions that they might have. Under users, you're going to see all the users you're going to log in into your application. So once your application is live, anybody who signs up for it, you're going to be able to see when they're logged in. And if we're in the paid plan, we'll be able to see when was the last time they logged in into the application. And then under user group, this is where you can define like, you know, like a role of certain users are going to be using your application. It could be admin, internal, client, consultant, whatever is relevant to you. You can just define those users and you can define what that role actually means. So let's say if I create a new user group, I can give it a name, then it can either add the users who have already signed up from the app manually, or it can set a condition on which condition I want these user groups. If I automatically want a user group to be assigned to a certain user when they sign up. So let's imagine if we have an Airtable where like, you know, it's like a list of different employees your consultants and like they have a job title. I can even like automatically define the user group based on the job title or I can like, you know, do it based on email domain. All these options are customizable here. So you can really pick the conditions that you want your user group to be assigned automatically. Here, for example, I'm just going to say anybody who's got an email domain with Gmail is going to be assigned to a client consultant user group. And then based on the user group, I can add restrictions to the user group to really define what they can add, what they can create, what they can edit, what they can delete. This ensures that the right people have the right access access at the element level, at the granular level. So if somebody wants to create content, they have the right permissions to, they want to add data to the database, they want to delete stuff, edit stuff. So that way everybody can use this application in the right way and no data is going to get corrupted and everybody's got the right permissions. It's super easy to set it up. And then we can also define the data restrictions based on certain conditions and certain user groups. We can define what people can do with the data. We are getting quite granular here where we have different user groups. We can control what they can see, what they can do, and then at the page level, but also at the data level. Level. So this does allow us to build really powerful portal applications or internal tooling for business because we can control things at such a granular level. So we have the user group defined and now we're going to go into a portal page. So again, just, you know, you got to create a new page here. So on a new page here, let's say this is my portal page. I can add like, you know, any one of those components. So here I'm adding a table component. And then for the source, I'm going to be connecting my Airtable. So this is where like your data comes in. So this could be Excel sheet, your Airtable or other data sources we talked about earlier. So just connect your right data source. And then under the content tab, this is where you can sort of define what content you want to show in this field. So here I can have like have a video a status performance live link, but I can just add a new field and I can just pick whichever type field do I want and I can map it to my Airtable data. So I can just add any fields I want. Additionally, I can set the filters for the data as well. So I already have a filter for the content status. And that's how you can like start sort of like massaging your app a little bit more to see what people can do with this app. And then for the next tab is actions. This is what you see like on the left here under actions. So here I can 
can create an action. I already have two actions here, which is open and edit. I can create a new action, which is to approve. And for a new action, I can define, I can like, you know, pick what kind of action it is. Let's say it's a one click update. And then for the update, it can define what it needs to update. So I'm just gonna talk to my Airtable here directly. I'm gonna say that if this is updated, if like, you know, someone says approve, it's gonna automatically change the status of the video here to approve. And the data is gonna be automatically updated in my Airtable. You can rearrange the order of the buttons and like the most, the one on the top is gonna be the prominent one and the other one is gonna move to the menu. And then you can also define what happens when you click on each item. By each item, we mean like the, the whole row of the table. So here we just say open the details page and open in the same tab. So you can see like we can start building a portal. So let's say you're a recruiting company, you wanna have for all your clients, you wanna have your candidates. You can like, you know, start kind of building this portal where you can like your client can view the candidate, they can view certain content, but they cannot view certain content. And then of course, a couple of the tabs are just quick styling. So styling is similar to what we did before, the padding, the colors and all that stuff. So that again, it makes sure it matches your brand. And for the visibility here, again, we can start defining, you know, like who can actually see this data. But I wanna show you something here super cool. So you might be wondering like, okay, so the data is coming from Airtable, a logged in user can see it, which means all the clients can see all the data. How do we make sure that only certain clients can see the data that belongs to them? This is where the conditional filtering comes in. So if you scroll down under source, you're gonna see this thing called conditional filter. So in my Airtable, when I connected this template, I also created a new table for people. So this is where I can keep track of the different roles that people have and all the users who have logged in. And here under conditional formatting, if the domain of the client's email matches the client name, we will only show them data that belongs to the client. For example, let's say for YCJ group, if like the email of the login user is YCJ group, then it will only show the data associated with YCJ group. Once you have like some basic blocks of your application ready, you can go to the preview tab. You can start playing around with the application to see how it looks and feel. And here on the top, you can see like you can change who you're previewing the application as. So you can start playing around with different music groups to make sure that all the permissions and everything are set correctly. Here, let's say if I log in as the user who has access to the data and I'm just hitting the button approve and now it's gonna automatically approve my data as well. I can see in the air table, it's already being done. And let's say if I in the air table, I change the performance to five stars. Now I can see it's automatically being reflected in the application as well. So you can see like the data is sort of syncing two ways. So no matter what I do here in the software application, it's gonna change my database and air table and whatever I do in a table, it's gonna automatically reflect those changes in my software application. And I can control all the data and what you can do with the data at the level of the user, at the level of the element. So it's all super customizable and super controllable to make sure the application is actually useful. So just start with a free plan and if it starts adding value to you, there's no brainer to upgrade to the paid plan. I like software. I think it seems a bit intimidating when you're first starting, but once you get a hang of it, this is super useful because of all the customizations you can do. I didn't talk about this, but you can also like do a bit more custom coding if you want to change the design or add more elements. But if you are like an agency, if you are like a small business who works with a lot of clients, who do a lot of back and forth, there's a lot of workflows involved with multiple people or for internal tooling, I highly recommend you to test it out and you don't need a developer, external developer. You just need somebody who's kind of like a bit more hands-on, who likes getting their hands dirty and like building things and feeling the gratification of building it themselves. Just give them like an hour or two, like let them play with this and they're gonna feel so much empowered and they're gonna start building so many applications for you or your team. Let me know if you have any questions. This was a tutorial. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the future videos.